So now that we've covered the total physical product and the total physical product curve, let's dive into the marginal physical product. So if you remember, marginal means what? Well, it means change. The word marginal means change. And physical product we talked about in the last slide means output. So we're looking at the change in output. So the total, the technical definition is the change in the out, level of output associated with the change in the use of a particular input. So just like total physical product, we're going to look at how the number of inputs affect output. But now we're going to take it one step further, and we're actually going to be looking at uh, how does the change in output per change in input. And remember, we're going to be holding all other inputs constant. We're looking at a one input to one output scenario, one input to one output analysis in this. So uh, we're going to keep all of the other inputs the same, such as uh, in this case, we're going to only allow labor to change. So we're going to keep land, capital, and management all the same. So the formula for marginal physical product is the change in output divided by the change in input. So what does this mean? What, why do we even care about the marginal physical product? Well, the marginal physical product looks at, it answers the questions of how much will my corn yield increase by if I use one more pound of fertilizer? How much will output increase by if I add one more employee? So the marginal physical product looks at adding one more. Well, is my output go how much is my output going to increase by if I add one more employee? How much is my output going to increase by if I add one more pound of fertilizer? Um, how much is the total pounds going to increase by for my livestock if I increase their, their feed ration by one more pound or something like that? We're looking at how one more input, one more unit of a certain input is going to affect output. So let's go ahead and look at the table below. We have actually calculated marginal physical product in column four. So marginal physical product, like we said, is the change in output divided by the change in input. So marginal physical product deals with the change in the level of activities. Column two and three deal with those level of activities. So column two is dealing with the input. Column three is the output. Like all, in, anytime you're calculating marginal, marginal physical product, marginal product, anything like that, um, if you're talking about uh marginal satisfaction or marginal utility, you always leave the first line of marginal physical product bank blank. So you can see right here, I've left that first line blank. Well, why do we do that? Why do we leave that very first line blank? Well, in order to calculate a change, we need something to compare it to. And line A, we don't have anything above line A to compare it to. So we, we can't really compare line A to anything, but we can compare line B to line A. So therefore, we leave the first line blank and start in line B. So another thing to note is that marginal physical product shows the rate of change of total phys physical product. Just like marginal utility showed the rate of change of total utility, marginal physical product is going to show the rate of change of total physical product. So in one of the previous slides, I talked about increasing at an increasing rate, decreasing or increasing at a decreasing rate. This marginal physical product is actually showing us that, that as long as these numbers are going up, the rate of increase is actually going up. As long as the numbers are positive, we know that total physical product is going up. Matter of fact, if we look at marginal physical product, it is increasing all the way until the point of right there at 76 hours. And it's at that point that marginal physical product actually becomes negative. All the way, all up here, it's positive. So, sorry all up here it's positive so as long as it stays positive we know that total physical product is increasing but if these numbers are increasing like they are up until point d at 22 hours up until that point we know that the rate of change if this is measuring the rate of change then we know that that rate of change is increasing and then once we get past there from this uh, point d or 22 hours all the way to point i we know that um, the total physical product is still increasing, but now it's increasing at that decreasing rate because that marginal physical product shows the rate of change. So let's dive into what does this mean? So let's look at if you increase the number of hours between 
A, point A, and point B. So you go from 10 hours to 16 hours. So let's assume that there originally was one person working for 10 hours a day. They get pretty tired by the end of the day. They're not quite as efficient. They don't have somebody else to help them out. But then they hire on a second person to both work eight hours a day. So we see what happens is that as we increase from 10 to 16 hours of labor, marginal physical product is 0.33. And the way we calculate that is we take the change in output. So the change in output was 2, 3, minus 1, divided by the change in input. So 6 minus or 16 minus 10 to give us 6. So we had 2 divided by 6 would give us 1 third, giving us that marginal physical product of 0.33. So what does that mean? What does that number mean? Well, by increasing from point A to point B, you are increasing your output by one third per hour. So each additional hour of labor is going to provide you a third of a more of this output. So let's imagine that this is um, this. So we're using that hypothetical company of, of Top Ag and maybe Top Ag is actually producing um, small farm implements, something that one person could actually make within a day, but it would take them about 10 hours to make so that one person can make one per day at uh, 10 hours per day. And then we increase the number of people to two and now they're working eight hours a day. You've got a helper to help you move that machinery, move that equipment around, move the inputs, and now we're producing three. So by adding those six extra hours, you produced an additional two units. Or for each additional hour, you're producing a third more of a unit. So basically what marginal physical product does is it looks at how much will one more unit of input, so in this case hours, how much more will one more hour of labor produce? Just like up here, it was how much more would one more employee add? How much more would one more pound of fertilizer? The key thing about marginal physical products is we're looking at how much would one more produce? How much would one more get us? And as I keep mentioning, as we go from 16 to 22 hours, we are increasing at an increasing rate. As we get from 22 to 62 hours, we're actually increasing. Our total physical product is still increasing, but at that decreasing rate. But guys, I'm going to leave you with this one last phrase. Whenever you're dealing with marginal physical product, it's dealing with the change in output per unit of input. So the one question you should always ask is, how much would one more unit of input get me? That is what marginal physical product is. How much would one more unit of input get me in terms of output?